they say this is not fair that this hall <laughs> should be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I want to take this hall back to New York. And it's, you know. Also, they'd rather play there than Avery Fisher. Oh, let's not go let's there. Let's not go there. <laughs> but some people would not be surprised. Okay, so that's a natural segue to your work in Avery Fisher and beyond with the Philharmonic. You conduct the Young People's Concerts, of which you said there are six every year? There four. 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 Four every year, right. okay. And then in addition to that, there are six concerts for which school kids are bussed in. Right. Because the Young People's Concerts are public concerts to which people buy tickets. Right. Families buy and go with their kids. Yeah. And... This is the first year you've done the entire season of this. That's right. But last year you did one? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was my my high hoop that I had to jump through. Uh-huh. An all Baroque program for kids. I remember that. And I, I said <laughs> program at the Philharmonic. I said to Chad <laughs> Smith, who was the artistic administrator at the Philharmonic, when he offered me that program, I said, Can you set the hoop any yeah. higher? You know, an all Baroque program for kids. And also, how are you going to make an impression on the Philharmonic with an all Baroque program? Exactly. Well, I guess it worked. I guess it worked. All, because you know? some people would say, well, there's not really much to conduct, is yeah. there? Ah, but we did the Bach there in Sweden. It doesn't, yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. get much better than that. So, obviously, you were a success. And, yeah. of course, you do more than simply conduct. You talk. Yeah. So, they like you because of that. But... They like you also because of your conducting, and the players are very supportive from everything I've heard. Yeah, they yeah. they certainly are very supportive every time I work with them. I can't, yeah. I couldn't ask for for more. Really, mm. really, it's 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 a joy to work with them. It's a lot of pressure, you know, because we only get one rehearsal. For right. Those programs and and the script and you know, the script is always changing. Oh it's yeah. Never well, seen, I've, I've done related kinds of gigs yes. and the script is always changing because you write it but you don't know how it's going to right. play or quite how long it's going to take so you're always rewriting right. up to the last minute. Right. Do you use a teleprompter? No. No, you don't use a teleprompter no. so that makes it all the harder. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, it can be very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> one of the most stressful things I do. Although <laughs> when I've gone to see you you don't appear to be stressed right. Thank and goodness you for that. really get nice results from the orchestra. Yeah. You know, everybody knows, well, the term known to many of the people who will be watching this kitty concert. And there's a kind of playing that will go along with the tone of voice in which you say those words, which is really a trash on kids. People really shouldn't talk that way. But that is not what I hear when I've gone to hear you conduct this. Well, they really play. That stems first and foremost, I think, from the whole concept. I mean, these are really hard hitting. Young people's concerts. Yeah. You know, they're they're not shying away from that. I mean, the the last concert we did, you know, a movement of Shostakovich ten. We yeah. did, you know, Sibelius two. We did a Stephen Stuckey percussion concerto. You know, yeah. I mean, this is real repertoire right. with real teaching, and it's I find it very stimulating because here I'm not an artistic island. Uh, I have a team that I get to right. work with, Ted Whipper, the education director, yeah. Matthias Tarnopolsky, the artistic yeah. administrator, Tom Dulac, the script writer. Yeah. The four of us work very closely together. We have a retreat, actually, in just a couple of weeks to go, th- to go for, for, through repertoire for the yeah. entire next season. Yeah. And it's a very stimulating environment to work because all of us are, are really uh, committed to, to doing the best teaching we can, bringing, you know, really... Uh, Cutting edge uh, uh, approaches to to teaching core repertoire and also introducing contemporary music and that sort of thing. So, although you know, when you're dealing with kids, they don't know the difference between right. core repertoire That's and right. contemporary music. Right. So it's it's a dual purpose because I think that um, as you probably know, the, the young people's concerts, the Philharmonic, for a while they were commissioning new works for each no, young people's that. concert. Yeah, I mean, uh, so John Deke wrote, wrote a full program for them. Richard Sortome was another composer. So they, um, and they've come back to sort of the Leonard Bernstein model now, where they really, the, the idea is to, to introduce the kids to core repertoire and give them. Uh, a, a real sense of a concert going experience and how to listen to a concert and I think I, I, I've pushed to keep a contemporary component 
in like you know every concert that we did this this year had a, a contemporary composer yeah. on it. So. And you know, one thing occurs to me. You mentioned John Deke, who of course is the associate principal bass of the Philharmonic mm -hmm. and a terrific composer. But John also has a project I'm sure you know about where he works with kids and adults and gets them to compose. Mm -hmm. I've been in one of those workshops with adults. Okay, I'm a composer anyway, so it doesn't count for me. But the stuff he got from people who may have had no musical training, it's extraordinary. We did it at a conference at Cleveland. Members of the Cleveland Orchestra were on hand along with John to play it. So what I'm getting around to is that you can have pieces by kids. We, that John, you did that? Ten of them this oh, year. Oh, man. Ten of them. How fabulous. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's very, very exciting. Uh, actually, this week we'll do eight different ones. We have five uh, elementary, middle school age, and then we have three high schoolers yeah. this week. Wow. Yeah, yeah with, for the school concerts. Huh. Yeah. And are these pieces that... John worked with them on or pieces that arose independently that they just wrote? No, they have, they've been uh, mentored. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, by, well, actually, the, the three high schoolers are through a program uh, from the New York Youth Symphony that Derek Brumell right. curates. Right, okay. And John... Derek being uh, a really terrific person and composer who works himself to the bone in New York doing more things right. than any one person should be able to do. Composer in residence for American Composers Orchestra. Composers and Orchestra, the person yeah. who devised the emphasis they've had the past two seasons on composer performers, which he, of course, is one of. Cause right. He's a virtuoso clarinetist. Virtuoso clarinetist. Yeah. Okay, one last question to wrap this up. Yeah. What would you say to conductors younger than you about this stage in your career? About this stage this that I'm in now? Yeah, or other stages in your, in your career. <laughs> Hang on for dear life. <laughs> It'll Probably come. Probably true. It will any... come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, as I said earlier, when I talk with young conductors, uh, really keeping the focus on the music, you know. Uh, that was something that my teacher, Gustav Meyer, sort of drilled into us, or at least something that, that was drilled into me was that when you stand on the podium or when you're in your capacity as conductor or music director, if you take your focus off of the music, you're on very shaky ground. Yeah. So really and make sure that your priorities are right. It sounds like you got the South Dakota job in some part because of your focus on the music, yeah. probably the Philharmonic likewise, that you're up there doing your Baroque music on one rehearsal and you're focused on the music in a way that everybody can see and right. respond to. Right. I've really, you know, no nonsense. Just, no know, nonsense. Ego. Yeah, all that's of right. That. That's right. Put that aside. Yeah, yeah. Put that aside. No, it's really and about the music. Making, Bringing yeah. the composer to the center of the Which stage. Which comes back to that experience that everybody's there, there for. The peak experience of playing the music at your best and hearing the music when it's at its best. Right. And if you can do something to help that to happen, people will know. And that is something to hang on to for dear life Absolutely. at the time when you wonder if you'll ever have a career. And you know what? This is, I don't mean to say that this is a consolation, but nobody can take that away from you. That's right. If your career is not going well for the moment, nobody can take the music away. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Fabulous, David. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. It's been a pleasure.